Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. Today on Bloomers in the Garden, we have a special guest from Centerton Nursery, Tim Bloxham. Three generations of dedication have made Centerton Nursery one of the best nurseries in the country. Solution-based innovations make selecting plants easy for the homeowner. Our guest Tim Bloxham started on the loading dock and is now one of their top salesmen. Tim has worked with all three generations and witnessed the amazing growth of this family nursery. Blue Label Shrubs and Perennials, Trophy Taker Daylilies, Hassle-Free Roses, Chef Jeff Edibles, and Caterpillar Candy plants are all brands you probably recognize, all launched and innovated by Senator Nursery. We're going to talk to Tim about his years at Centerton and how the Blue family grew Centerton Nursery to be such an innovative plant producer. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages with Tim Boxham. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and eco-peat. Eco-peat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumneytown Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Tim, welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You have really seen it all, huh, Tim? Starting with Ray Blue to Denny Blue and now the third generation, Amy, Bobby, and Donald Blue. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of questions here to start off. <laughs> How did you get started at Centerton? And just follow that up, who hired you and what was your first job? Okay, uh, 36 years ago. Wow. I'm in, I'm wow. in my 36th year. So... Um, and I was working in a bank as a loan officer and my neighbor, really? my, my yeah. neighbor was Center to <laughs> nursery's first, uh, sales rep, Carl Kins. Okay. And, uh, he asked my dad, would my brother David be interested in taking over his territory? He was going to retire. My brother was flying for us air and, and, uh, my brother said no. So I was second choice <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and actually, my brother now is out of the airline, and he builds ponds in Florida, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. He has a uh, he has a big operation. He builds some major ponds. Wow! Wow! And, uh, but so that's how it all got started. And I went in for an interview as a second guy, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I interviewed with Ray and Denny. Okay. Uh, Ray was definitely the patriarch. He started the business in 1984. Four, I think, wow. and uh, <clears throat> sat down. And asked me the the regular questions. So you want to be a nurseryman? This is not a bank. We work, <laughs> at, we work every day. 
<laughs> yeah, and I yeah said, definitely not banker's hours. I said, I got to get out of the cubicle. I, 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 definitely not for me. And I didn't know a lot about plants. I knew an azalea from rhododendron, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. My dad was a biology teacher and yeah. a vice principal in a high school, and he also, in the summertime, took care of a golf course. So I knew plants. My oh, dad wow. was big time into the into gardening and all that kind of thing, but I didn't know much about it until this. Wow. wow. So it started on the ground floor. 36 years ago. This is my 36th year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I've almost known you that that long. That's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> bunch, yeah. of, bunch of old guys here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> watch it. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Young at heart. So the first job I did at the nursery, um, they told me that the loading dock would be mine. It was January, so it was early. <laughs> um, <laughs> the loading dock would be my thing. Everything that went out there was going to be my responsibility. And that was a lot because I didn't know anything. And I didn't speak Spanish at the time. Si, oh, <laughs> wow. So, um, so the first job I had was in the winter. I was pruning Hellerai holly. Okay. I had blisters the second day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we prune them all by hand, and now we have a machine that does it. But I uh, could imagine was, the talk in the office. That banker's not going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a personality, but yeah. I don't know about his work ethic. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's got soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. <laughs> So you're now we talked about this and you and I have talked about this before. Maria, your wife, uh-huh. you guys met at Centerton. I I love this story. All right, this story it starts we had our first employee ever at Centerton was a girl named Rosie Clark and she was getting on in age. She was from Atlanta, Georgia and she she was very loyal to Ray and Ray was very loyal to her. Okay. My wife at the time was in Mexico when I started. And Rosie Clark said to me, said, you're going to like this girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, ah, Rosie, come on. You know, I'm an American guy. Yeah. And I said, I don't know. Well, and she showed up. I went, ooh, I like this girl. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was it was a pretty long courtship, but it, it was, she's yeah. a wonderful person. Yeah. Like, I mean, did she, like, say, oh, I, I like Tim or, but. She, no, it was, it was a battle. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. Wow. it's really different. I mean, and, and. Uh, it's a culture thing, right? It's made to listen. I can get along with anybody. I think. Yeah. We we really struggle with a lot of the little little cultural things that mean nothing in the big picture of the world. <laughs> right. But when you're so used to one thing, and then you bring something else, and it's totally different. I lived by myself for five years. Okay. And then to start dating this girl that didn't speak the most English in the world. How um, did you get over that? I mean, just yeah, you had to learn in a hurry. Well, they put me on the loading dock, and there's 20 people working under me. I right. was responsible for everything that went out the door. They oh, were bringing wow. the plants up and loading them on the truck, and I was responsible. Okay. You learn in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously, you learn all the bad words first. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> right. And, uh, and, I, and I was in charge of making sure the right plants went on the right trucks in the right numbers, mm-hmm. the quality control. And... Wow. Uh, and Maria was one of the people working there, and I asked her out, and and we went out to dinner, and then, you know, it just kind of grew. Nice. But it was, it was there was a spot there where she got mad at me, and she wouldn't. We didn't go out for like, I don't know, nine months. Wow. Nine and, months. And wow. I asked like twice a month, and she said no. And I kill, I still kept going back. Now, what story were you going to tell me? And I said, save it for the oh. show on the way here. All right, this is our engagement thing. <laughs> um, I wanted to do it in the in the sense that she felt like she was home. I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable in our culture, marrying an American guy. I wanted her to so right. found there was this mariachi band from Philadelphia. Okay, and they they were called uh, uh, Mariachi Flores, okay. and a group of seven brothers, and they're fantastic. They've played wow. all over the world. Okay, and wow. uh, they had a restaurant. And they had played at the nursery for one of our year-end parties. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I'll ask her to go. I'll, I'll, I'll ask her to get married at this restaurant. So I got one of my mom's friends and who <laughs> knew a jeweler up here, went and came <laughs> and bought the ring and all that. And it was always, we had worked so many hours. You worked 60 hours a yeah. week, and we were dead tired. And Saturday afternoon would come along, and and I told her I'd take her to that restaurant that night. Right. And I said, I'll, I'll play it like I usually do. We're too tired. And I, we won't go, you know, and I'll, I'll say, I don't want to go. We don't have to go because I know you're tired. Right. And she she says, no. She goes, we're, we're, we can go. It's okay. I was like, 
uh, you, you sure? <laughs> she goes, no, we're going. And I was trying to, like, get out of it kind of, and, and she said, no, we're going. <laughs> so we pull up here. It was at the um, uh, the Borst building here in, in Philadelphia. It was in the basement, the restaurant. Okay. So we parked in the parking lot, and there's a guy practicing his guitar out there. And I walk oh. up there. I don't know the guy from Adam, really. Right. And I go, here's this ring. I want to do this so she's comfortable. We're, get, we're gonna eat dinner here in your restaurant and you're gonna come to the table and sing and bring the ring some way surprise him. <laughs> and the guy took the off guy, down the street. The guy looked at me like, <laughs> are you crazy? I said, at that time I was 28 years old. Oh, dude. My gosh, I'm think gonna about grab him by the throat if he, yeah, you know, right. if he thinks about anything else. But anyway, so we go in the restaurant and they, this is a long story. I don't Let's know keep going. <laughs> okay. So we get to the restaurant and the guy says, I don't know what I said, just bring it out and surprise her. The next thing, the guy, the waiter comes to the table and he says, sir, you have a phone call. I'm in Philadelphia. I'm from southern New Jersey. There's nobody calling me. And <laughs> I, That's smooth. My wife's like, what's going on? <laughs> so I, I walk up to the, re- to, the, to the receptionist and I say, yeah, he, said, he said, just take the phone. I'm, I'm holding the phone in my ear and I'm talking to the guy. And he says, we don't have anything like covered to, to cover the ring. I said, do something. I said, just come put it in a napkin. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, they put it in a bottle of champagne, obviously, or a glass of champagne. So I had to buy a bottle of champagne. And they uh-huh. came and they sang this song called Novia Mia. And what my does wife that and mean for them? It means my girlfriend. Okay. And we still, uh, you see, I told you it would get me. That's all right. Um, <laughs> so we, they came and they played the song Novia Mia. And the ring is at the bottom of the champagne glass. Right. And she has to finish the glass by the time they're done the song. They play the song three times. <laughs> <laughs> My wife doesn't drink much. So she's sipping, and then finally she looks and she goes, is that real? <laughs> <laughs> I've got tears coming down my eyes. The whole place is clapping. Oh my yeah. God. And my wife's looking at it like, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but she said yes, and uh, oh, honestly, right. I'm like, the, you know me, I'm the yeah. ultimate optimist. Yep. The first year and a half, I was wondering if we were going to be able to do it. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. 28 years later, we're still oh, uh, that's beautiful. getting it done. Yeah, so it, it, it was very cool. That's and beautiful. she's she's yeah. my best supporter. And yeah. she's also, she can push my button. <laughs> well, <laughs> but that's right. what you it's You and I have known be. each other for a long That's, you know, we need that. Oh. We, we, we need Probably that. Probably more than I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, if we, if we were left to ourselves, we'd be in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> so. But she moved on and she, she doesn't work at the nursery anymore. She works for the, the county. Yeah, and, Nick, and she does a lot of interpreting and things like that. Okay. She's done very wow. well for herself. Nice. Yeah. She was working 60 hours a week, and she ended up getting 19 college credits. And uh. she had no high school degree when she got here. Yeah. So wow. she did all that while working full time. Wow. Good for her. Yeah, I'll tell you, you have a beautiful family. Yeah. Um, the boys are... I mean, we have we, those stories could go on seven shows. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we talk about our sons all the time. We, uh, <laughs> all right, well, let's Bobby, on Donald, one. Amy. You know, we talk about plants the entire time yeah, we're right. there. Yeah. <laughs> we never talk about our sons. Oh it's like, gosh. oh, Lord, what's that plant over there? <laughs> and oh. Carl. Oh, anyway, all right, we're up to a break. Yeah. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants, 
that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Offers of Kissel Hill Home and Garden Store, Roristown, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We're here with Tim Bloxham from Center to Nursery, and we just heard a very romantic story. Yes, we did. <laughs> You know, Centerton and Julio, you, you helped me because I didn't know what it meant. Uh -huh. You know, but I gave someone a Besame Mucho, did I say it right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Daylily. Yeah. And Centerton, they, they, they're not everything is like always like means like red Daylily. That <laughs> some of the names are romantic, but. A lot of things is Centerton. Come from the heart, and that's the guys on the street. Yeah. Those people care about the people they work for. Yeah, they really uh, do. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is good. But it started with Ray Blue, and that I mean, you and I have talked to this, and I am so confused because he was in so South America, Equ Ecuador, Ecuador. Because right? yeah. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to be wrong. Please, how did the nursery start? <clears throat> okay. Ray worked for Maca um, he worked for Seabrook Farms, a big vegetable yeah. producer down in our area. Yeah, and he was their Frozen field manager. Food, right, he was their field manager for quite a few years, and then he took a job working in Ecuador as a grower of vegetables and some flowers. And he ran field operations in Ecuador, I think, for eight years, maybe maybe a little longer than that, because wow. that's where his son Denny and Joe went to high school in Ecuador. In Ecuador. In Ecuador. Wow. Um, but then he was back here for some reason, and there was a guy named Donald McAllister who had 13 greenhouses all the way over where Denny used to live, if you remember that where that house is. Mm -hmm. And there was 13 greenhouses, and they had azaleas in them. And Ray and his wife bought them, and he went into... into and Just that, like that. That was 13 acres. We now are 238. Wow. 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 And... Uh, now, did he do both jobs, or did he just say, I think "I'm he done did at both Seabrook"? Job for a few years, and I, you know, I could be corrected on this. Yeah, I'm it's not, not right. sure exactly because I don't know everything all the way back. But um, he he did that, and he worked for Seabrook at the same time. Okay, and then it evolved and it grew and grew. And, and Marlene, his wife, who's a very formal, beautiful lady, yeah, was right in there. And Rosie Clark, and, and Rosie and Clark, Rosie Clark, Georgia. And they, and they were the first three people, and they managed that, and uh, and it grew from there. And it's one of the top container nurseries, I think. If you look at the total picture of what they do, it, there's thirty-two states they sell to now. Yeah, wow, that's yep. impressive. Mm -hmm. It's uh, right in the heart of South Jersey. Trust me, it's it's a lot. Come springtime, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been there when those trucks are have to get <laughs> loaded and out. And I'll tell you another well. Talking about that, you know, you're talking 16 weeks where it's all it really has to happen, yeah. yep. and there's 20 people in the office, and it is full bore, 100 miles an hour all the time. Yep. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen an out loud argument in that place in 36 years. Wow. Wow. Now somebody might get frustrated and walk away from somebody and mention something to somebody else, but right. it always it just they find a way. Yeah. It's just Donald says somebody calls, we don't have any more trucks. Say no to no one. And yeah. we go rent more trucks. Wow. It's it's Donald's driven trucks, Bobby's driven trucks in the last couple of years. <laughs> well, Ray, I mean, I, I'm always amazed by <laughs> the story and like for instance, when you got when Ray needed equipment or he needed had this idea, he wouldn't go try to find somebody who sells it. He would build it himself. It's a farmer's mentality. Oh my gosh, what are that Tell us stories about some of the equipment that he well, has built. Farmers in general, I mean, I think they find a way because the funds aren't always there. Right. So they make do with what they have, and they tweak, and they alter. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I can remember first was our potting machine. There's a company, I think it's in Atlanta, called Java, and they mm -hmm. make potting, like soil-moving machines and potting machines, things like that. Right. Well, they bought the, Centerton bought a, wagon wheel hard wagon wheel 
potter with just a little hopper on it and brought it in and we were potting I guess it was like 60 to 65 plants per minute finished in the house and okay. we kept breaking machined parts <laughs> and we called and say we need this part and, they, and the guy would say how are you breaking this part he says we're running the heck out of this well Ray had put two balloon tires on each side a catwalk generator <laughs> compressor <laughs> and, and this thing was uh. we were this thing's not supposed to run more than 40 plants a minute. We're running at 60, 65. <laughs> and Java couldn't believe it. They sent like four or five people that landed in the airport right down the street from the nursery right. and came in and looked at this and went, holy mackerel, how are you doing this? And that's who Ray was. And it, it filters down because yeah. uh, Donald, his grandson, is just like Ray. He's yeah. a, I've, I've gone to him with things that I'm doing at home, say, Donald, I have this. I need to get to here. I got that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it, it, it's really neat well oh, didn't right. they like was it ray that built the trimming machine it was ray and actually my brother-in-law pedro yeah um ray was the designer and we also had a guy this named, thing's this thing is scary <laughs> i mean <laughs> that thing Ex explain if you can ha what i'm talking about what happens <laughs> four people run this in fact that's that is the uh we bring in new people in, they go on the trimming machine. <laughs> if you can't make it on that machine, you can't work at Saturday. Right. <laughs> so I've seen guys get a paycheck in two days and say, thanks for the effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what happens is you get four guys and they pick up four plants, two in each hand. They right. put them on this, on the it's belt. conveyor so belt, it's, right? It's not a belt. It's, it's kind of like a chain with arms on it that kind of pulls it around. And when it gets into the cutting area, there's belts running in opposite directions that squeeze the plant and spin the plant. Right, because it goes against the friction against the pot, right. and it spins the pot around. And then there's two high-carbon steel uh, blades that are totally adjustable. You I mean, it looks like a lawnmower. But it is. Oh. It is. It's a lawnmower <laughs> blade, but we buy some high-carbon steel ones, so they, they last longer. Right. And where it used to take you know, a crew of six, seven people three days to do a house of azaleas trimming, right. we do it with four people. In a morning. <laughs> oh, wow. So, but that's what I, I mean, I've seen it work, and that where you're putting the plants on, it, the chain pulls it around, gets to the, where the blade is, wow. zip, spins Dumb. it around, gets to, and then there's <laughs> there's another blade that's got to do the top, right? Or is it just doing there's the two sides? blades? There's one across the top, and right. there's one comes up the side, and they're adjustable on their angles. <laughs> so you can you can shape a plant if you like into a pyramid, right? But as fast as they put the four down, they pick four up coming off. Okay. And uh, it, it's you got to be moving. You got to be ready. It has three phase <laughs> electronics in it. That thing is pretty high tech. And all made and by designed and built by Ray Blue and my brother-in-law. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. And that's what they do with a lot of things. We have a lot of machines like that. The trimming machine for our roses. Right. It looks like and Donald's the grandson. Right. Is the one who's done that. That's like a walker. And it has a little tiny generator on the top, and it runs an electric hedge trimmer. And you, you it's like a joystick. You haven't seen that at the thing? Not yet. You you take the walker, place it over top the rose bush, you push one thumb button down, and it takes around the outside. You push the other one, it goes across the top, done. And you walk, and you, ah. you don't ever have to touch the plant. Wow. I have seen the robot that organizes the plants and spaces them where nobody is touching them. And there's, there's, <laughs> Uh, Slip and Jimmy, there's, uh, they, they named them. They, <laughs> it's, there's, I think there's four of them, and, and they go so fast, you're like, whoa, whoa. And, and once in a while, I'll, I'll drive by with a customer or something, and there'll be two of them facing each other, and they're just beeping. And I'll get on the radio and say, hey, we got a Mexican standoff. <laughs> <laughs> because they get too close to each other, they can't turn. And I mean, that is fantastic wow. technology. Julio and I talk about all the time about where growing plants and – genetics of plants it's real science and here's the engineering side of trying trying to profitably run a nursery and try to and still make, stay on the cutting edge get that get that product out there mm -hmm. and we have a nice dynamic because in so much as ray and his son denny were the yin and the yang mm -hmm. um ray was outside denny was inside with the sales and marketing right right now we have that in the third generation with Donald at running as president, he's Ray outside. Right. Can build, do anything. Bobby is a tech guy who's great 
in the sales and the marketing, mm-hmm. and Amy runs the sales, the logistics of everything. Yeah, and it's and a I, real nice checks and balances. And I'll tell you, nicest family, you uh, know, and like doesn't care how many plants you buy. They don't treat you differently. They are they know. are family to me. I'm, I've been there. I held Amy in my arms when she was a kid. Wow. When she was a baby. Wow. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. All right, we're up against <laughs> the break again. We'll be right back right after this. Fertilum Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilum Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniels Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Church's Garden Center and Farms, Seashore Road, Cape May, New Jersey. Collegeville Do It Best, Ridge Pike, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. County Line Nursery, Harleysville Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Tim, you know, Centerton Nursery continues to grow better varieties of perennials through its own breeding program and creating partnerships like the uh, one with Dr. Darrell App's daily program, huh? Yeah. uh, The perennial thing, we we do have some of our own varieties. Genetics. Own own genetics, but not as much as Bobby travels all around the world finding new varieties. Yeah. Um, yeah, But we do partner with, with some people, like we are the only people who get their trials. Okay. And there might be a grower, and I don't know yeah. who they are. I'd be speaking out of turn if I if I did. How many times am I telling you? It's like, can I have those? And you tell me no nope. because <laughs> they're <laughs> your trial plan. Like, <laughs> but we, right. you know, he uh, may go to England and meet up with some hybridizer uh-huh. and make a deal with them where we're going to try twenty of their plants, like fifty or seventy-five of each one, mm-hmm. and get them shipped over. So in that sense, we are there. We do get to name some of those, but some most of them are already named. Right. Um, as far as the daylily thing with Daryl Apps, that was a really neat thing. And I'll go back to the, I'd say, mid-90s. Right. Uh, we had the trophy taker line, which were daylilies that were better than your average daylily. Your average daylily blooms about 20 to 22 days. Every one of these will bloom 40 days. Yeah. And yeah. they all have a rebloom. Or yeah. Not not all of them, but most of them have a rebloom or an extended bloom. And Daryl took that even further with Denny, uh, mm-hmm. Ray's son, Donald's father, Uh to create Happy Ever Apster, Dr. Darrell Apps, who worked with Longwood Gardens, and and he's the breeder of, of uh, Pardon Me, mm-hmm. um, Rosie Returns, obviously, and, and some other ones. But those day lilies are all guaranteed rebloomers. Okay. Wow. All right. I remember when the first time I saw two-gallon perennials. Now, <laughs> perennials, those of you that are – gardeners you may not realize but it used to be that you grew and bought field grown dug in the mud dropped into like a paper mache yeah paper mache (laughs) pot and it that was it then you your selection was limited to like creeping flocks mountain pinks and you'd get uh, every once in a while you might get (laughs) something but When Centerton started put growing into two gallon pots, growing you know what would be considered almost a mature plant, it was like revolutionary. But it also came with a cost. I remember saying, "I can't sell a perennial for that." And my gosh, I was proven wrong. Well, th- we ever had, since. Thank goodness. Right when I started, I think it was 1987. Um, I remember we had we had about five 
varieties of perennials. There's hosta and the still bee and the day lily. I think there's five or six. Five. To start. I, I should have brought that catalog. I oh have my that catalog. Gosh. Yeah. Five. Yeah. <laughs> and you have yeah. 50 varieties of hostas now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> alone. But they, you know, they, uh, people, people come into the show. You'll never sell that. People won't buy it. They yeah. won't spend that money for that. You're crazy. You're going to go out of business. And Ray just shook his head and said, I got a plan. And yeah. Boom. I mean, boom is right. We, I mean, we were the first two gallon perennial grower on the, as far as I know, on the East Coast. Right. And that's what I've been told. That's so, um, it, it's, it's incredible. And, and now, you know, everybody's copying. Well, you had the, you know, it's, you used to have the, the uh, catalogs. What was Spring Meadow or, the, you know, yeah. the, what was it Spring Meadow? There's another one too. What was it? Wayside? Wayside. Wayside. And Absolutely. So the perennial, Wayside. you know, 1099 and they were, plugs yeah they're either roots yeah. or you know you'd yeah. have i i, I know i we so, used i used to grow you know back in the 80s i used to just get some of the perennials from the bulb growers and you'd get this thing that you know it looked like a thing of hair that you'd hopefully <laughs> it would grow and what it was is with roots right you know and uh and then some you'd, we'd get some bulbs and they'd grow from bulbs that, you know they look like you know, small potatoes. And you never knew what you were going <laughs> to you know, get. I never knew. Yeah. Never knew. Never knew a quality. And instead of, like, having a complete all the way down to the varietal name, it, you just got the name of what it was. So it, what the two-gallon plant did, the two-gallon perennial, it was instant impact in the garden. You didn't have to wait exactly. for it anymore. So people, And the one gallon was there, but and that was the price value. But when the people got the, the bang, the boom for their buck, you know, and right. they saw, wow. I I can put this in the in my flower bed, and it brightens up the whole flower bed because yep. it's not you know as big as your fist. And I find it ironic that Centerton actually when they started growing in pint small four inch pots, I had to chuckle because it was like, <laughs> all right, you conquered the big plant market, and now you're going back to grab the the four inch market. And I'll tell you the thinking on that. The thinking on that was, we want to jumpstart. See, from the time azaleas and, and rhododendrons and forsythia bloom until the time perennials comes on, there's few plants, for the number of plants that are actually out there, there's few plants that are flowering during that time. Right. Where we could take a quart mm-hmm. and put a perennial on it and have a decent size and put some more transparent plastic over those and get those to grow while the other ones were coming on. So right. we just... We're just wetting people's whistle. And, and, and so for, we want to be out of those by Mother's Day. For my customer, what it does is it, it allows them to enter the, the trial where they're not, they don't want to spend the $15 or That's $20 another. for that great big perennial because they don't have the confidence. But for a four inch or a, or a quart size, they're willing to spend that money and, and try it. You know, it's funny with, with the quarts. And with the vegetables, which I'm sure we'll talk about yeah. down the road, yeah. when they, when they told me we were going to be selling quartz, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get a new job. <laughs> 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 but they they knew they had figured all this out. Yeah, that we're going to hit that market doesn't want to spend the big money. Right, and they're going to try it, and we're also going to bridge the gap when there's really not a lot blooming. Right, until the bigger stuff gets ready. So we're just wetting people's whistle and getting them fired up, keeping your sales moving. Although annuals at that time are going okay. Right, but it it was it was genius well i get i get the whole thing because even at the the agribusiness level the square foot that that takes to grow you're actually making a bigger return than mm-hmm. if it were a 2 gallon perennial absolutely yeah i get space it space is money yeah i get it but for me the retailer it's now i've got 18 skus to sell rather than just two yeah right but that's okay. That's Sorry. Because right, it does work. It does work. All right. We've got another break. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. 
If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties, from aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomer's Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomer's carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomer's experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's Greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Uh, Tim, Centerton Nursery, uh, over the years, I've watched them develop brands or families of plants, and they really help homeowners look for something that'll work. I tell you what, this summer... Amy Blue, I I was at a trade show and I was kind of bored. And <laughs> you guys <laughs> developed caterpillar candy, and I thought it was genius. It's it, a plant that's grown that's meant to be eaten by insects. <laughs> <laughs> so so I man, it sounds crazy. But if you have a pollinator garden, you know, and you're attracting butterflies that are laying eggs on your plants. There's a whole host of plant of different types of plants that's in this family that are that will attract specific butterflies. I, and the label on the plant actually tells you what butterfly it attracts. Uh, it does. Which is cool. Yeah. See, that's the type of stuff that I and love about that. That all came from, you know, visiting garden centers that had little butterfly displays, meaning but, butterfly caterpillars in a what do you want to call it? Cheesecloth thing and oh, yeah. for the kids we, to look at and things we like have, that. Surely if you're surely, listening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then it was like, well, why don't we grow some plants for this? Right. And our, you know, the, the guru sat in the conference room and thought about what can we do? And I, it, things just evolve and I don't know how they do it, but man, it's amazing. It, it really is. It, wow. it was a winner. We sold them and yeah. they sold out. Yes, they did. They sold out. Yeah. So, well, so did we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Uh, but it all started with blue label perennials, which uh, I'll tip my hat. You had something to do with, but that we don't <laughs> want to talk about that. <laughs> now <it's, laughs> it started as a blue label, a little triangle blue, blue label, and it turned into like a blue ribbon thing, and then because everybody we, asked for the blue blue labeled plant, right? And yeah. and I suggested blue label or blue blue ribbon, and then Denny, the owner, said. You know, let, let's look at this a different way. We can put our name B L E W and yep. put a ribbon on it. Da 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 da. And all the pictures on our tags are, they're taken from Bobby Blue takes them from his 
He's also a photographer. One more thing that he does. <laughs> and we send the pictures to the printers, and we get our, our pictures put on the tags, which is pretty unique. And if you're in your local garden center, look for that blue pot. Because blue pot and, in a, the blue and a, pot. a label, a big label. Yeah, yeah. S labels. A, yep. Yeah, with a blue ribbon on it. Yep. That's it. Wonderful. That's it. Hassle free roses. Mm. Another thing that evolved by, you know, Denny's mother, Marlene, uh, Ray's mm-hmm. wife, she loves roses and she loves the European roses, which right. are harder to grow. And they're, you know, not as disease resistant, da 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 da. So Denny did a lot of research. Denny puts his mind to something. He's unbelievable. And he came up with a bunch of roses that were, for lack of a better term, more resistant to Joe Homeowner. Right. No rose is, is hassle-free. I don't care what. And that's what our tag says. Right. All roses require a little bit more care than other things. But we started, and, and there was a list. I, I want to say it was like 80 in number, mm-hmm. that if a rose didn't meet that qualification in those 80 things, it didn't go in hassle-free. Same you know, thing with trophy tables. We talked about last week the uh, gold medal plants from yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania Horticultural mm-hmm. Society. Yeah. Those plants have been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're brand new. Yeah. And that's the same thing with hassle-free roses, Absolutely. where these roses could be around for 50 years. They're Absolutely. just outstanding as far as disease resistance and insect resistance, and it's just easier to grow. It kind of, the hassle-free rose thing was born... Uh, a little bit from the ha- from the trophy taker line because we did the same thing to find better daylilies. Okay. So we to find better roses, we did the same thing, and then he came up with a list, and and obviously they were Marlene approved the first list that we had, <laughs> and uh, all right, that's still a very good line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it makes it easier for us as retailers to be able to say any of the hassle free roses. If you want to get started, start with those because you'll have an easier time of it. And it's a, a red pot that has hassle-free emblazoned on right on it. Yep. You can't, can't miss it. Yep. I, I got to say that when you started with Chef Jeff Edibles, like I said, you know, stay in your lane. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing? You're a perennial nursery place. It's another time yeah. when I said I need a new job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sell I'm gonna sell vegetables. <laughs> and, uh, but again, they were so far ahead of the curve. Yep. And, yeah. And it's some of those vegetables that are hard to find or you want to, like, uh, what was it? ghost pepper? I think you guys are growing ghost peppers, Trinidad scorpion, yep. avocados. Oh wow! We're selling avocado plants. Avocados. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but potatoes. I, I was There's looking for left. potatoes. There was there really? were the whole wow. fingerling potatoes oh, yeah. I was looking for. French fingerling and uh, and that usually you start those from bulbs that they're in a bag and they're mostly rotted, but when you can <laughs> grow the plants that are started, success again. It's, it's all about the homeowner having success right. in their yard i don't know how many varieties there are now of vegetables oh. but uh, i and bobby could tell you exactly but uh one two three four five six seven and there's like 10 there's like 12 50, 12 pages 12 of nothing pages but and there's what three 20? lines in each page wow, wow. so i wow. mean wow. it's it's in the hundreds <laughs> and that includes different types of herbs and that there are 40 varieties of tomatoes 40 wow. varieties of tomatoes. Uh, a page and a half. I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's oh. heirlooms right on down to, I mean, like a Jersey tomato is the same thing as a, um, what is it, Ramapo. Yeah. But people come in asking for a Jersey tomato, and if you sell them a Ramapo, they don't want it. They want right. Jersey tomato. So it's all branding. I know. Right. I mean, and Jersey uh, tomato to me is supersonic jet star, beef steak, you know, big boy, better boy, you know. Yep. And it describes the size of the yield yep. of the tomato, but <laughs> hey, but if it says it's on it, I can just say here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> here you go. And the mel, you know, melons and blueberries, and yeah, it just keeps and going. Cucumbers, yeah. and <laughs> cucumbers, yeah. cucumbers are big. Peppers and cucumbers and tomatoes, oh, yeah. wow. right? Oh, wow. Um, then been fun. The other thing that was new that you grew, like you never, because in a round pot, trying to grow a ground cover like ivy or something it's really hard yeah so you started growing something called blue blanket ground covers and then all of a sudden it opened up there's 24 or 25 cells in a tray there's three different sizes and so one is geared towards a retailer right and and the other two are geared towards the wholesale or landscape trade yeah um but some some places sell. I, s- I mean i sell the bigger tray absolutely you know because what are you going to do with, you know, four plants? 
you know. <laughs> so, you know Especially if you're like, talking about Oh, I have it. Vink- it's cheap, but you know, it's Vinca. gonna. It'll be a hundred before they grow in. Vinca. You're gonna Vinca, put four right. plants on a bank. It's not gonna work. You need the whole tray. Right. You know, right. So. so, and that where um, price point isn't bad. And again, where it's not like the old style where, you know, you got a tray and it was 50 rooted, you know, cuttings without, in, any, in, separation. without any separation. Yeah. And, you know, you'd pull out one and, and they're all labeled well also. So it. it's easy for someone to differentiate what they what what they have in front of them and also how many plants they're going to need as opposed to that. That's right. That blanket smart tray. marketing and smart plant selection. That's definitely true. Mm-hmm. Definitely true. Day lilies, I almost don't even want to mention day lilies because there are so many and that there are no better day lilies than the day lilies from Center to Nursery. Wow, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, one thing we keep talking about are, are shrubs, and, and no, we don't talk about shrubs, but we're talking about day lilies, herbaceous perennials, um, things like that. But your shrubs are, you have a big selection oh, yeah. of plant material, woody plant material as well. No trees, right? you know, no trees to speak of, but... You, you name it. Well, this what we're trying to do there is, you know, landscapers want a big plant. Retailers want a plant that's nice that somebody can put in the back of their car. Yeah. So we're trying to be the high-end retail, low-end landscape size so right. we can be two bangs for the buck. Right. And um, we we grow the best varieties we can find. We don't have the dogs. We, we truly try to weed right. out and the and You the don't ones. have 20 types of holly. You know, you no, have there's six or eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, um, the best ones. We do the ones that we that we do well. Yeah. There's a lot of good growers out there. So you take what you do well, you run with it, and you market it right, and you're going to do well. Right, right. Well put. All right, we've got another break. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five. One eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for house plants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil, and Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor organic potting soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend organic potting soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, Tim, there are so many innovations. 
What's going on out there? What is going to be next at Centerton? Well, it, honestly, sometimes we find out the last minute also, but um, <laughs> because they don't really get confirmed on things until the last minute sometimes. Right. But Bobby's good about getting in some of the newest varieties of things. Um, one thing that's really hot on the market right now are the poster varieties of Bud Leas. Um, we have a full line of those now. And, uh, you know, we did the amethyst and the blue, and now there's pink in there and, and poster white, and they're, they seem to be really good plants. It is a and, and it's a proven winter variety, but uh, it is, you know, I've got to hand it to him. That has been my favorite plant for probably the last three or four years. And proven that, winters uh, is up their game. They really have done a good job putting really good uh, varieties out there right. of, of many different kinds of plants. Right, and I know there are some nurseries that almost feel like they're a competitor, but th- they aren't, and that they also were pretty demanding on what they wanted from the nurseries like they're you had very to buy the pot you had to you know buy the tag you we cannot to, put a centerton label or the centerton name anywhere on a proven winter plant and everybody out there listening i want you to understand something when you're buying a proven winter plant it's not the same like if you go to your local garden center they're buying from their best nurseries and the best nurseries in the country if you're going and you went to lowe's to buy a proven winter plant who knows it, it it just has the label in the pot. The plant may not be n- nearly as, as strong, nice yeah. as from your independent garden center. So, you know, all proven winners are not the same. No, they're not. Um, the hydrangea line of proven winners right. is through the roof. There's a lot of good hydrangeas out there yeah. now. That There's plant that. is kind of flooding the market now. Uh, but I, if you I'm pick- telling you, it's H's. Hookara hosta hydrangeas. Hemerocallus. Right? Enough. Let's go on to the alphabet. Uh, well, I'll tell you, blue jangles is one of my favorites. Blue hydrangea. J- what, hydrangea? Blue, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I put two in my yard. Uh-huh. Uh, they were they came back from a truck that had been, and the plant got damaged. Yeah. So the roots were all exposed. I planted the house and see what happened. Right. The next year, it was triple the size, and what a flower. Blue um, jangles hydrangea. It's yeah. really a nice plant. And it's a proven winner. It's, uh, you know, we, we did a segment last week about hellebores, how they have, they used to be like, a, you know, it's like, ah, oh, great, After yeah, thought. Lent and Rose. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, they're hot. Well, they yeah. used to get real straggly, and there's a lot of good cultivars out there now that yeah. aren't yeah. quite as gangly, so to speak. Right, and um, their flowers are face up as opposed to hanging down. So you, you can still the buy the one. There's some that now are hybridized to be hanging down. Winter Bells is one. I don't don't and it realize. sells. <laughs> it's like we're trying to get away from that. Uh, but the, <laughs> the hydrangeas, you know, you, the limelight series with little lime, oh, lime yeah. punch. Uh, What's quick the fires. the new little it, lime punch? And then there's another one. Limelight that, Prime. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. it's a the compact, original, smaller the ori- variety. Yeah, the, the original limelight was a seven footer. Right. The little lime is a yeah. four footer. Yeah. The limelight Prime is in the middle. I had someone send me a nasty message you and we know. were talking about we were talking about hardy hibiscus now you guys grow one of the best hardy hibiscus out there the whole all the series now i had said that they get five feet plus i know that i have them in our display gardens and they're every bit of five foot sure you know probably pushing close to six and the flowers are a foot across they're not eight inches right. they're 12 in. what is your favorite variety of hardy hibiscus? Ooh. Uh, ah, <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, Luna. Uh, I was going to say the Luna. You want something small and compact? Luna is really nice. Midnight Marvel is yeah. a great one. Yeah. Um, now, Midnight Marvel has foliage. To, that dark, dark foliage and a blood red flower. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, let me see. I gave my daughter two center. T- she lived in Philly, and they had the little area to plant with in front of their place and i gave her two centerton um hardy hibiscus nice. and people would stop and take pictures <laughs> by well they would stand by the plant and it. they'd do selfies <laughs> by the hardy hibiscus from centerton uh, there's yeah. a new series called head over heels they're really nice um starry starry night is a yes. really blended pink that's a really nice yeah. flower yep yeah. um summer in paradise is another good one okay um so uh, and there's like see another H. 
hibiscus, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Like, yeah, so now hearty hibiscus, hydrangeas, hookera, pastas. All right. Uh, All right. We are really up against it. We're going to have to take a break again, and then we'll wrap up right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Tim, I've been trying to get you on this show for three years. Oh, my gosh. Finally, (laughs) finally. (laughs) Got me in a weak moment, but I appreciate it very much. Uh, You guys do it right. I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Hey, uh, thank you, Brett. Brett. Great job. Thank you, Brett. Yep. Hey, next time you visit your favorite garden center, greenhouse or nursery, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the Garden. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.